Welcome to Kala 2020. It's a big joy for me to, to welcome the audience and this fantastic group of researchers to this conference. When the ideas about this conference started, it was very much based on, on the initiative of the book, Women in International Film, Policy, Practice and Power. And I have said all the time that this book and the research is the backbone of Kala 2020 conference. So I'm very happy. And we are going to listen to these voices who are behind the book. But first, I would like to start to read a pledge uh, that we have in Kala. And everyone who joined Kala tick in a box that they agree with this statement. We declare that we do not and will not condone any forms of discrimination by myself or perpetrated by others on the basis of ethnicity, religion, geographical origin, skin color, religious beliefs, sexuality, gender identity, socioeconomic class, disability or age. I equally declare that I do not and will not tolerate sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, ableism, fascism, and any other ism. So this is a safe space. And I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Susan Liddy from Ireland. Susan, this collaboration in this group, it was an initiative from you, but what has it meant for you as a researcher and as, an, and as an activist to be in this process with the book? Okay, so I suppose in a way, the title of the introduction says what I think, continuity and change. And, and I was aware of that. Things were changing, but there's a sameness as well underpinning everything we did. Um, a, a sense that we're moving forward, we're, we're moving forward very sporadically. And to me, there was a whole, um, there was a whole unity of research and researchers that uh, that could could be brought together. I think um, to push forward, as you said uh, earlier on, the, the voice. I think we have a, a collective voice. That is not to say we are not all individual researchers. We're not doing our own thing. We're not. Uh, we have information about our own country. Sometimes it doesn't go beyond that. But the fact of the matter is that I believe that. Um, research is activism or can be activism in, in a way and uh, all of us have published elsewhere but I just thought the collective voice to look at our industry uh, does a couple of things first of all it puts on record what is happening now I think that's such an important thing we're all aware of this idea of women's work being you know invisible in history or being lost and at different times and I'm thinking particularly around history the discipline the idea, oh, women will never be lost from history again, because there's been so much done. But of course, we can be lost and our work can be lost. And I found it profoundly moving, actually, to read, uh, not, not all of us, but some of the contributors talking about the work that had gone on in their own countries. And I just thought to think that, um, that we could be in the same position in 20 years, that all the work that's being done now could fade away. So I suppose what I want to do is I want to gather, if possible, uh, uh, a collective voice of researchers. I want to align them with activists and practitioners. I think together we will be very strong. Yeah. Sorry, I was breaking up there. Um, I think together we will be very strong, Helen. Uh, and um, I, I think it's just this whole solidarity thing. Uh, I have a, a an absolute, um, maybe unfounded fear, but I have a fear of the loss of the gains that have been uh, so hard fought for over the last number of years. Now, forget about the past for a minute. If you even look at the last uh, seven or eight years, I'm so fearful that those gains will be eroded. Uh, that I'm, I think that all of us, for wherever our voice is most amplified, whether it's in research, whether it's in activism, or as practitioners, we have to um, really make sure that doesn't happen again with every way, in every way that we can. Uh, look, I don't have the definite answer. Who does? I don't know. All I know is uh, I don't want to have uh, given so much and worked so hard um, and look back and go, ah, you know, 
we didn't strong, stand tall enough. We didn't um, raise our voices together as strongly as we might have. So look, we'll all be six foot under someday, for some of us sooner than others. And I just want to make sure that um, we stand shoulder to shoulder. I, I think that's what it's about for me, really strongly. Thank you, Susan. It, for, for a with the president, it's really music for my ears because what we do believe in is organizing. And if I go down under, Lisa French, uh, what has your, what's your feeling, what's your visions for the future being part of this? Hello, uh, hi. Um, I'm really pleased to be in this book. I've been doing some research recently about women documentary directors and um, putting a book together about the female gaze. And one of the things I was trying to do was find out what the industries in each country that the women, I, the filmmakers I spoke to, what their industries were like. And it actually proved to be really difficult to find a resource um, or even, you know, very much about, you know, the industry itself, what the policies are, you know, some kind of overview. And I think the book Susan has put together really beautifully does that. I think um, to have 17 different countries represented is incredibly important because uh, what we can see is that the issues, we've got a data set that tells us that the issues all over the world are pretty well the same, you know, in that um, women are a minority in just about all uh, creative areas and the progress has been really slow. So it's, it's important to have that, but it's also important to understand something about how uh, every uh, country and and circumstance varies for each woman and so you know if you're making a, a film in India it's you know it's different to someone who's making one in Iran or um, making one in Australia so you know if you come from Iran you know you're you it's hard for you to even make the film and you can be persecuted for taking it to an international film festival if you're a woman in India making films the the uh, the class system so strong it you know the inference from wherever it is you c come from is quite different so I think uh, understanding those things but also understanding that women are bound by things that they share which I think are um, experiencing being women in the world even though their own experiences can be completely different in their lives and their bodies everywhere and their industries are completely different. Uh, so um, I, I, I think it's fantastic to be, to have uh, lots of different ways of um, seeing our global industry and being able to reflect on what, what joins and what is different, if you like. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, I'm thinking of the Carla program. Uh, actually, we have one roundtable this coming Sunday uh, with um, uh, Women in Cinema Collective from Kerala, where they have organized, organized because of a very tragic incident, but now it's a very powerful. Uh, so organizing happens everywhere. So, but thank you for these thoughts about the differences. Very beautiful. So from Australia, we, I'm so happy that you all came here today. Sharon McGowan, uh, you and Susan Brinton, if you would like to start to share it, we are in Vancouver now, so it's the other part of the world from Australia. What's your thoughts about this process? We're actually from Canada. What did I no. say? Australia. Did I, no, oh, no, no, sorry. I'd I'm like to be from Australia. Australia. I'm, I, I'm a oh, bit of a <laughs> We are in what? Vancouver, Canada. We are happy to be there. We're also happy because it's in the middle of the night for you. So thank you for I know, joining it's us. It's so great. I know. We're doing <laughs> exercises to stay awake. Um, yeah. I'm very, I think we're very, uh, I'll speak for Susan and I, we're honored to be a part of this book and to be able to tell our story in it because I think it ties very much into the theme that you're talking about. Um, Susan and I have been in the industry for a long time since we were practically children. I think we met when we were about 20 or 19 and we're much older now. 
And we have seen the waves and the struggles and the changes. And I think we both got our start because of feminist activism and organizing that happened in the 70s. And I mean, we got into the industry and we've seen how organizing is the only way to maintain the progress. And whenever or women's organizations have sort of faded away because we think we've made gains, everything just starts to crumble again. And that's why it's so important what Susan's doing with this book and bringing together the data, the pictures, the stories, the deeper, the deeper knowledge of how um, systemic oppression happens and how uh, gains are wiped out. And I think for me, it's so important that we do this organizing on a global level now because the threat of, of being pushed back is so great right now. And I think we need to be more vigilant and we need to be more organized. And I'm just thrilled to be a part of this group and to be connecting through WIFTI and, and through this uh, Carla. So thank you for that. And Susan, did you have anything to add? No, I, I, I've been, I always get kind of um, excited about the collaboration element of it. And I mean, as Sharon said, we, we started collaborating, you know, and then kind of went, I went off and did a career and I come back and Sharon's still plodding away. And it was really only the last five years that we really dug into it and had a lot of fortunate events happen. And that collaboration, I mean, we started out going, we're, it's us against the world. And then we slowly began to move forward and accelerate and, and get into WIF Canada and be part of WIFT International, WIFT. And I think that has been so engaging and exciting because all the themes that are in this book are about, you know, women needing to come together and organize. So um, it just, yeah, it just thrills me. Thank you, Susan. Uh, you also, as Susan Lee, part of, of the WIF International Board, so we also work very close together. Um, and we also know our weaknesses. Is one of the weaknesses from WIF International has been to be represented on all continents. And that also makes me very happy that uh, you managed to, to actually have uh, uh, contributors from, from so many places. Agata from Nigeria, uh, would you like to give your reflections about this process? Are you here, Agata? Are you? Oh, yes. yes, I am here. Yes. Hi, would you like to share your feelings about this community and this process? Thank you very much. It's, it's a, a very wonderful thing that is going on here because, like the popular say, that united we stand, divided we form. So if women come in this type of type of collaboration, it will strengthen and enhance women's um, level of understanding of how to do things within the film space, and then it will help for there to be continuity. Because if we don't have this type of collaboration, you'll discover that uh, it will not be too long and then people will be falling away and then they will say, oh, maybe they don't even understand what the women are doing. But with this type of collaboration, there'll be more strength for women. And then women will have a common voice to be able to talk to everyone and to say the need for this or the need for that that has to do with women in film. So I think for me, it's a very nice opportunity because here in Nigeria, you hardly have many organizations that have to do with women. So if we have this common voice, it then puts us on the pedestal that we'll be able to also air our views for people like you and everyone in this organization to also understand what it is like, you know, having women in fame in Nigeria. And then I too, will be able to learn what it is like the experiences you will have in the different areas that you are also involved with, uh, with uh, film making and all that. So I, I think for me, we should all continue to be united and even strengthen one another in areas that we feel that, oh, there's need for this in their own side, we strengthen one another. So I think this is a very nice, um, area for us to continue to forge ahead and to continue to uh, lift up women so that tomorrow 
it will be, be better than it is today with women. Thank you. Thank you, Agatha. Uh, I'm very happy for your contribution also because with the international, we, we actually started to, to have new chapters. We have the newly started with Africa Forum for okay. Women in Film and Television in Nigeria, uh, with Kenya. Uh, I also had an email a couple of days ago that with Senegal is on its way to start. And I'm really happy for that. Uh, I think it's important that we, because filmmakers, if, Female filmmakers are everywhere, uh, and, and it's really good that we can bring ourselves together. So, um, you are also far away, Bernadette Luciano, uh, but you're representing a European country, and it's a bit challenging country, isn't it? How has it been for you? You're representing Italy in this book. Um, Susanna Scarparo and I, Susanna is in Australia and I'm in New Zealand and we are representing Italy. And it's really interesting that when we first started doing our work with Italian women filmmakers, the reaction we got was how interesting that it took someone from, took two people from, you know, Australia and New Zealand to actually draw attention to what women filmmakers are doing in Italy, um, which, which is actually the case because they still remain invisible. And when you talk to a lot of other filmmakers and people in the industry, they say women filmmakers in Italy, oh, who are they? So um, I, th I think this is a really interesting opportunity for us. Uh, we've been working in this field for um, a while. I first had a, um, a sort of a film series where filmmakers from Italy, when we were in the virtual space, before everyone was in the virtual space, they represented, they introduced their films to an, a New Zealand audience. And that was when I first came into contact with the women in film because women in film in New Zealand really supported what we were doing. And so that was uh, really important to us. But I think what's, what's more important is, I think what's always been important for the work that Suzanne and I do is that, that we do it out of our passion for Italian cinema, but we also do it out of our real commitment to what these women filmmakers are doing and how they have remained virtually invisible and unacknowledged by a film industry that still remains very much closed in terms of its relationship to, to women. So for us, it is, an, it, it is an activist proposal. It is also linked very much to scholars working together with filmmakers and with the industry um, and, and to bring this out into the public sphere and to work on it collectively because it is a very um, isolated feeling in Italy. You feel, you know, so that this idea of being connected with women in other parts of the world and filmmakers and scholars in other parts of the world who are dealing, doing the same thing is really very important to what filmmakers do and to what we want to do to highlight the great work that they're doing. Thank you very much, Bernadette. Uh, I understand the challenges and I, I, I really hope that the, the collaboration between you researchers and, and with Italy could increase as well because it, it's needed. I know that from our Italian sisters. Another challenging country is Poland. Uh, Greta Gober, what could we do like to share uh, from this process? Can't hear you, Greta. Uh, you are on mute. But now? So, now I hear you. Now yeah. it's better. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm doing research on Poland because I'm Polish. So that's like the natural development for me. But I'm uh, currently based in uh, Sweden where I'm doing work on the Swedish uh, women journalists. So I think very much this, this process of working on this book has reflected my, my also personal story which is uh, this kind of search for, for your own tribe, as they say, you know, in academia, it's very important that you actually have a tribe of people who, whose work you read, who read your work. And, and, and it's sort of, it is, it is limiting in, a, in, in the sense, if you look at it from the perspective, if you are outside of, of such tribe, you know, like you publish work that doesn't really belong anywhere. So this, this, this sense of belonging, it was very important, when I came here and I discovered that my colleagues from, from my, my department or from, from the section of cinema studies here, three of the colleagues, uh, they are working on uh, this project, which was, which was called uh, Gendering um, Screen Industries. I was so excited. I remember getting an invitation from Ingrid uh, Stig's daughter to 
oh, John, yeah. York. yeah, this is where we met. Uh, this is also where I have met uh, Susan, who I've already been in touch before uh, because I have pitched uh, my chapter to her book. So I was like this, you know, a child in kindergarten <laughs> when I saw all these faces of the names of, of some of you who, whose work I have quoted in my PhD, you know. So it was like, um, like a super exciting uh, moment. And, and it still is. I think it's very important uh, to be part of a collective, to, to belong to, to a group. Like, like you all were saying, this feeling of isolation is, is not great at all. I personally lose sense uh, of my life even, you know, if I don't have this kind of belonging um, experience. And it has been sort of also difficult on a personal level to move countries, you know. So I keep clinging to Poland and, and want to come back there, but also the, because of the uh, language issue, you know, like the way you work through your own language is extremely important. But uh, academia is, is internationalized today. so. So we have to also take advantage of digital media and, and it's great that Carla, I mean, great and bad that Carla 2020 is online. I would have been extremely excited to be there and meet you all in person. But at the same time, because we are online, much more people can benefit from listening and, and learning and, and you know, getting excited and joining the, the fight because it is a struggle, a fight, a revolution. So, so let's, let's keep on doing the work. And I, I see changes like in Polish film industry is changing so much. It's so exciting for me to observe as a researcher of, of the things, how things have changed and are changing. It's, it's super, super exciting. I, I started my PhD on, on the television industry and was very disappointed when I didn't meet any, any, uh, I didn't, I interviewed 50 people and most of the women, they didn't feel any need for, for any, any sort of organizing on your, like, a, sort of like a denial that there is any problem. And this has changed throughout these five years tremendously. So now you have the theater, you know, industry is getting involved. You have the film, of course, industry, you have the television industry, a bit lagging behind, but it's changing. So it's thrilling. And I'm, also looking forward now to initiate another project on diversity uh, when it comes to racial inequalities. And that's a big problem also in Poland right now. So I'm yeah. looking forward to all, I, I'm listening to everyone. I'm gonna spend my weekend in the office just so I can listen. <laughs> I'm happy Thank you very that. much. Thank you, Greta. And I, I really would recommend actually all of you, we, we have a concept in Carla we call activist speeches, where we have invited filmmakers from all over the world. And one of these speeches is made by Olga Haidas, who is a Polish director. Mm. Uh, and, and it's a fantastic speech. And it's also touched the LGBT um, uh, dimension of filmmaking in Poland. So I encourage you to watch these uh, speeches because it really gives you feelings. And, in our industry, we work with feelings and facts. So thank you, Weta. Thank so you. we're to Anna Pereira. Welcome on board. <laughs> uh, <Anna Pereira. laughs> uh, okay, sorry. No worries. Um, no worries. You are from Portugal. Yes, uh, so welcome. You just arrived the course. I give you a short brief. I ask everyone here for a couple of minutes to reflect on your feelings and experiences of this collaboration with this book to be one strong voice together with other researchers in the world. Would you like to share what this has meant to you to be part of this? Uh, for me it has been even slightly different because I'm, I'm a gender and politics sociologist. So it was actually a co my co-author who is a screenwriter who's also an academic, teaches journalism in Portugal, that invited me because I work at California State University in Northridge. I'm talking to you from LA. It's 1.30 a.m. Thank you for the effort. <laughs> no problem. My pleasure. It's just lovely to see everybody. <laughs> um, I think for me, was thinking in an interdisciplinary way was wonderful. Um, and also to think, because I also do research on the Me Too movement um, in Portugal, but also uh, in Europe. Uh, so it has been interesting for me to kind of think about how can we think better about the problems that interest us from different lenses. 
So from a journalist lenses, from an activist lenses. So I think I would say that from a screenwriter lenses. So I think it's, it has been mostly that, how all these different perspectives have helped enrich the, the work. Thank you very much. That's interesting. That has been one dimension when we program Carla. We talked a lot about it. This to look, and that's what film is maybe to look through the world through someone else's eyes, to, to try another gaze when you look at things. And, and we have one of the researchers, we'll have a, a, a little keynote tomorrow about the queer gaze. So it's natural for me now to invite you, Scotty, from Germany. Well, what would you like to share from this process? Uh, Scotty Lois from Germany. Yeah, maybe, maybe Elizabeth is going to join because we co-wrote this piece. But for me personally, um, it was a continuation of, since we talk about collaboration, a collaboration with Ellie, for instance. We've been working on those topics for years. And also collaboration across other um nationalities and other industries with colleagues in europe um if Flicka, for instance um was here in potsdam a couple of years ago where we tried to set up another network to as others have already said highlight the specificities of each country but also see the commonalities but also the differences how you can learn from you know, it's the same problem on the surface, but if you look at the details, that are there are differences where you can actually um, try to change things. For, for Europe, or especially for Germany, for instance, it's all about public funding. So that's a lever to go into, to, to talk about quota systems, for instance, which would not in the same work in North America uh, or other places. So that's for me super important to know the background through the researchers in their areas and then see what works there, what could work somewhere else or not. And another thing, since you already did the little um, plug for the keynote tomorrow, another thing that's important to me is, of course it's called WIFTI Women in Film and Television, but to me, intersectionality and diversity is more than just women and just gender. So that for me is the next step. And that's why I love the, the program that you put together, Helena, because um, it really highlights that that is the next step. It's not just about women and it's not a unifying, you know, persona, whatever. Like there, there are more challenges to, to look at sexuality, um diversity in in different ways so so that's i think another thing that we need to look at more plus that is also discussion where the industry is already going at least in germany which is great thank you very much scotty and before i let elizabeth in i would like to, i would like to pitch one thing for you and actually it's not my idea because we have uh, connected to WIFT, we have um, support our trans members, it started in Sweden, but now started to take form internationally. Uh, and then it was my uh, colleague, Patricia Watson in, in um, WIFT New Zealand that was mentioned before. She, she, I think she made it as, it as a joke, but Susan Liddy and Susan Brinton, who are on the WIFT board, I will actually put this on the next agenda and suggest that we change our name to women and intersectionality in film and television because the cool thing we don't have to change the logo because the i the first mm -hmm. i is for in and we could we could we could expand that to intersectionality so i hope that's my vision for the future and thank you scotty for 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 saying that uh, but elizabeth promer uh, we will have two panels actually sunday from germany with a special german focus because the experience we have through our sisters with Germany, but also Pro Quota Network, is that compared to many other countries, they do nothing from the public funds. It started in Schleswig-Holstein now with the Hamburg Filmförderung, but most of the Germans fund not even address uh, these matters about gender equality and diversity. So it's a challenging country to work in, as we see it. So Elizabeth Promer, what does, did this collaboration or will it mean to you to be part of this group? Elizabeth, are you here somewhere? Yeah, hi. Um, you can hear me, yes. Um, oh, 
So you're on, on mute? No. Okay, no. sorry. Somehow it muted. Um, can, I, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear you now, yeah. The collaboration for me and, and like the research collaboration like we have here is twofold. I have like two, two benefits. On the one side, um, as Scotty said, the international benefits to see what is similar, what is different, and how mechanism works because what I'm really interested, I've been teaching, I'm, I'm sort of part of the industry. I just figured out since 91, my son is 29 and I started a, a year or, um, when, when he was born at teaching at film schools. And I've watched these wonderful women attend film schools, half of the classes of directing being female. And then I see them at Berlinale festivals with their first film and somehow they disappear. And now with all our collaborations and coming together and activism, they come up to me and say, Ellie, I, I want to tell you my story. And I'm like, why? What happened? And so um, we have this um, twofold that I really feel like the activism of our research, I can benefit um, from the collaboration of research to know what is the mechanism in other countries, how can I do research to help the activists. Sort of our research that Scotty and I are doing is like sort of what can we do to help quote a film? Um, what is the mechanism? Um, how can we help to unfold the mechanism? We know that the data alone is not going to change the world, but we know that you can then counter arguments. It's about quality and all these things. And it's not really true that in Germany, nothing is happening. I mean, they spent a lot of money for the FFA study film and gender, which I, I did all the data, but it then just does, is sort of like, okay, we did a research and that's it. And the big film funding say, okay, we, we show out how many women and men get data and that's it. So we still have to be really busy. And that's why I think the international collaboration is good to see what is working, how can we, where can we get them and what are the mechanism and, and where should we not stop? And I'm always very inspired. I go home from all these events of activists or researchers, and then I have new ideas. What can I correlate? And what, what, what should we do with new data? So for me, it's, um, and, and I think it's the international, the difference, the diversity that inspires my research. Thank you very Thank you much. All. Thank you. Uh, so you have a neighbor country, Eva Flicker, you're from Austria. And, and as I see it from my, my Swedish case, Austria has, uh, the Austrian Film Institute has taken things for real the last years. We have Iris. Uh, no, yeah, Iris. No, my brain. Yeah, Iris, Iris, Iris Sapehela. Iris Sapehela. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is active uh, there, uh, and um, yeah. Uh, so, so what? What? And Lena, Lisa, you are two from Austria, actually. So, what? Uh, what would you like to share from this experience? Who would like to start? Um, so, hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here to join you all. Thank you, Susan, Liddy, for doing this book and having us uh, in this book, and also Helene to organize this conference. I'm really very sad not to be able to meet you all personally. And um, um, yeah, Lena, you maybe then continue. I just start. Um, I think we had a very good cooperation, Lena and I, to do the research on the Austrian uh, film industry. And we were very happy to, um, were financed and supervised by Iris Zapihela, as you mentioned, from the Austrian Film Institute, and also um, uh, Barbara Frenzen um, from the Bundeskanzleramt, uh, yeah, a chancellor. Mm -hmm. And this was very helpful because to have uh, finances uh, with a really strong feminist interest, this is uh, really rarely, and they supported us very much, and they were very much interested to have this study done. And this was a very important step also, because all women in the scene already knew the data and the, the balance or imbalance, uh, but uh, we just, well, I think it was very uh, uh, important that the data, that there were data produced by independent researchers from the academia. And we did it for five years and uh, we thought this will be a very big step. But uh, now I think we see that this has to be continued research. And I've heard, Scotty, that the, the next step is done by you, that it passed over to do to you. I'm not, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know, but this is fine. Uh, 
but uh, the data are just one and we have to see how the links go together with the filmmakers, the policy makers, the decision makers, the fundings, etc. And uh, I think the most important is the feminist group that started with all of this. This is FC Gloria in Austria, which is a uh, cooperation for many, many years, and they started to get all the things done and run and discussed. And without them, I suppose nothing would have happened. So these were the women in the film scene who started with all this political process and lobbyings and organizings. They're doing uh, more things now. We have uh, a big prize now. They, they give uh, in two years, they started to get to give uh, big prizes for filmmakers in the scene. There are new decisions how to, to, to get fundings with better uh, books, film books, etc. So uh, I'm in some way just an observer from a distant point from the academia, how things are going on. And I'm really sad that I could not do networking with you all and have <laughs> drinks with all of you together. We have <laughs> Lena. Uh, yeah. Yes, please, Lena, what would you like to add to Eva's uh, reflection? Yeah, I would just like to add uh, for the um, international co collaboration part, maybe um, it has been mentioned before, there are local differences, but in the end, what it boils down to is that film is a global phenomenon and anti-feminism is a global phenomenon. Yeah. So feminism and feminist activism needs to be global as well. And I think our collaboration here in this book or this and this conference um, contribute to that and I'm very happy to be part of it. Thank you very much. And, and can I add something because uh, Skadi what you said I think this is very important. May, may I interrupt you because we are yes. a little limited of time. Yes okay really sorry. Like everyone to have a voice. I'm very yes. sorry uh, but I would like to continue to to UK. Shelley Cobb are you there somewhere? Here. So, would you like to share from a UK perspective what you? Yeah. Um, uh, well, as you might be able to tell, I'm originally from the States and came over to the UK to do research and women in film. And um, I think that this group and Susan putting this book together is really helpful in ways in terms of recognition and community and feeling like, and I know this has already been said, but like, oh, it's not just us. It's not just me. <laughs> it's not just our nation. Because coming from the States to Britain, there was a lot of like, you know, Martha lazon has been doing that great data work for so long. And we've known that Hollywood's a problem. You go to Britain and, and probably I'm guessing other small nations with film institute. And it's like, oh, well, we know we're better than Hollywood. And I was like, yeah, I don't, not sure about that. <laughs> and then our data was able to prove that, that it actually wasn't really much better than Hollywood. Um, so I then seeing that and meeting, you know, being friends and meeting many of you, be able to say Ireland, Sweden, um, other places also were having problems, you know, the same kinds of problems, be able to say like, look, here's, here's evidence. Um, and that evidence was useful for the filmmakers themselves to have recognition of like, oh, I'm not crazy. There is a problem here. And then to see that other places like, yeah, actually, this is a similar problem and we can learn from each other and the things that we're doing. And of course, the differences, as Scotty said, but also the comparisons and the things we can learn and share and say, OK, we have wide evidence here because I think I'm assuming I'm not the only one who for a long time thought this is probably a global issue. This is probably an international problem. No, probably. We know it is, but we need proof because everyone questions you. Oh, you know, equality is done. It's fine. Or at least they did for a long time, as everyone said. Things have changed, activism has changed, awareness has changed and improved so much. Um, and I'm, that's been quite extraordinary um, and really useful in the, um, in, the, in the UK film culture to make proud pressure on the Institute, to make changes, to get people's eyes to open and for them to no longer to be resistant um, and to be able to now have this book and say, look, it's everywhere, this is a problem. And if we aren't part of the, the change, then we're going to get lost behind while everyone else continues to move forward. And I think that's what's been so great about meeting many of you, seeing you all here now, being a part of this book and other things, we've, you know, places we've met around small conferences, big conferences, is to learn that from each other and to develop that towards this book. And I'm sure, no doubt, other kinds of things like this where we can collectively say, look, this is an international 
problem. Um, and there are, as you've already said, Helen, things we need to step into next. Um, you know, we did data on women of color, which was quite shocking. Um, in the British industry, the kind of extremely low numbers there. So continuing to build on the things that we've done um, and to have this collective evidence for the filmmakers, for the people in power. And I think someone mentioned for students. Um, that's one of my next steps is trying to get and figure out how to talk to filmmaking students about this data, what it means and what they can do. Because if we can get them thinking now about how to be more um, diverse, how to work with others who are not like them, but will bring creative challenges and, um, you know, be more diverse film sets. That I think is, again, a way of thinking about the, our work influencing the future, if you will. So it's a real pleasure to be a part of this book. And again, thank you to Susan, to everyone, and to be here. And again, I'm also sad we can't only in person have drinks. Thank you very much, Shelley. So I, I force a little bit now because we are almost running out of time. So I, 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 my, my plan was to finish with you, Maria, but I know you have to leave. So uh, my Swedish sister, Maria Jansson, we have worked together. You have done a couple of research reports. I've been the president in Sweden, with Sweden forever, since 2013, and had the pleasure to, to collaborate with you, Maria. And I know, actually, how much the report, uh, the real tearjerker, uh, did to the changes in Sweden. Uh, maybe it's not visible for the world, World, but uh, I know the influence of research. But I also would like to say, and I have saved the five uh, Nordic countries to the end. For me personally, I, when I started uh, with WIFT, after a couple of years, I decided to try to reach out and, and have had a collaboration with the Nordic countries, with Nordic for five years. Uh, that I mean is also part of the background that we have Carla today, uh, because it has meant so much to get to know each other and, and to, to be there for each other. I don't know if we really did so much, but we knew that we had each other. So that was another dimension. But from a Swedish perspective and, and from your, your perspective, what has that, this meant to you, Maria, and Louise Wallenberg, who's also part of the book? Well, um, a lot. <laughs> so I watched the research presentations this morning online and I think they were all fabulous and it was so interesting to um, hear your presentations about the chapters and I'm really looking forward to reading the book as well. <laughs> um, so for the future I think that I think that it's important to gather information from different countries and I think that one thing that we could do after this book is to do some comparative work because we know I'm also a gender and politics scholar and uh, we know that even if we kind of use the same methods and the same policies in different countries they will have different outcomes uh, depending on context and also of course uh, like European countries where there is a lot of state support have different conditions than uh, countries where there are no state support for filmmaking. Uh, so I think that a comparative project would be very, very interesting to do next. But I also think that there are other aspects that we need to work with in the future. For instance, what we know that when women, uh, women's positions are moving forward, uh, a lot of resistance against gender equality and against women is also raised. And that would be something interesting to, to look at in different countries, how this, how this kind of what kind of expressions this resistance uh, takes in different places. Um, and also on the globalization note, I think that in, for instance, in Sweden, uh, Swedish government, they are trying to attract film productions to Sweden. So there is a lot of money in film productions. And as it goes global, what does this mean for gender equality? When we have like transnational companies being the biggest, um, funders and when also film support is going global or at least regional as in uh, in Europe. So I think that we have a lot to do and I'm so glad Susan that you could that you collected us all or gathered us so that we know each other and that we can contact each other. Thank you. Thank you very much Maria. So uh, we stay in so Tarja Savolainen from Finland. Um, What's your feelings and your reflections of this collaboration? You're on mute now, Tarja, so you have to unmute yourself. Maybe I can. 
can you please unmute yourself, Tarja? Yes. Okay, there we now? Are. Yes. That's okay. okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it has been a pleasure to work in this project, and I'm very happy to get a contact to you in, at least so uh, in this distant way. Of course, it would have been much better to meet face to face, but unfortunately, it's not possible now. So I find this ha has been a very, very important project, and I hope we'll, we maybe we could do something else in the future too. More. Uh, I did my PhD on women filmmakers about their history in Finland about 20 years ago already. And so, but I have not had much <clears throat> possibilities to work with other women who are interested in same things. And so it has been in a way the first time I could have met at least somehow uh, other women in, in this area. So, yeah, what would I say else? Oh, I'm, I'm happy. Thank you very much, Taya, for, for sharing. Um, yeah, I, I live in the south part of, uh, of Sweden. I, I'm also educated in, in Denmark, I actually worked a lot in Denmark. And, and uh, I, I used to say my, my perfect vision of the future should be a mix between Swedish feminism and, and also the the resistance, but also the fight that I know that a lot of Danish activists do. They are not organizing right now, but I, I think they will come. Tess, uh, you have made a fantastic presentation of your contribution to this book, um, and you had such a nice clothes on. I'm sorry, it's, that was so <laughs> fantastic to see. No, sorry. Uh, uh, but what, what was your feelings of this collaboration or being part of this? Um, thank you for complimenting my suit. I was actually going to wear it for my PhD defense and then I had to have my defense on Zoom. So I figured this was the perfect excuse to wear a suit. Um, so I'm very glad that that was noticed. Um, what, um, what did I get out of a collaboration? Well, a lot of the stuff that's already been mentioned, obviously, um, so I'm not going to repeat everybody's brilliant points about the benefits of international collaboration. Uh, instead, I think I'll take a more personal focus. Uh, as a junior researcher, having the opportunity to collaborate and publish with so many much more renowned, much more sort of um, already established researchers was like a huge opportunity and of course a big privilege. Um, so that meant a lot. I really appreciate Susan Liddy, first of all, for, for even making the book, but secondly, for taking the chance on, on some of us junior researchers and letting us uh, try and, and fit in. Um, and I think that was, that was one big step. The second thing is in, in Denmark, as you say, there's a lot of fight and drive and there is some organizing um, with, with Denmark as well. Um, but it, we're, we're in a different place in terms of organizing for gender than uh, some of our neighboring countries. And there's the same sort of goes for the Danish um, research part. Like when we look at research on gender and film, there's a, a big body of research for, for gender equality. And we have a lot of gender research in Denmark, very critical research as well. And likewise for, for film, we have a, a rich tradition for film studies, just like our film industry is very um, strong and has, and has been for a very long time, but there hasn't been much overlap with the two. So we don't really have much research on uh, the particularities of gender in the film industry. Um, so for me, being one of the first people to sort of look at this in a Danish perspective and really sort of get into uh, the inequalities um, from, a, from a research perspective, I needed a network outside of Denmark. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known what to look at and how to look at it. And, and which numbers are interesting to look at next. So I draw a lot of information and inspiration from seeing these more established researchers um, sort of show the direction that we can go in next. Um, there's a lot of stuff we need to look at in Denmark still. So, so I definitely, I, I benefited a lot from this collaboration. I'm so happy to hear Tess. And, and we actually have some Danish contribution in Carla too. We have one of the blocks for Saturday. Uh, 
I don't, don't remember what we call it officially, but internally we call it the Me Too block. Um, and it's called, um, if you don't interrupt it, you allow it. But that will op be opened by a six minute activist speech by Dorte Römer, who is a Danish actress who has, she dared to speak up and it has been a very high price for her to pay. So, so please listen to Dorte and give her your solidarity because that's needed. So last but not least, uh, I'm happy, where are you? Gudrun Elsa. Are you here? Oh, there you are. Sorry. Uh, yeah. it's so small pictures and, and <laughs> yeah. So uh, Iceland. Uh, Iceland has meant a lot in the collaboration with Nordic. Iceland is also the country, not when it comes to film and gender, but when it when it comes to gender, you are actually the best country. You were you I have Doug Moses' daughter, who used to be the president for with uh, Iceland. We worked a lot together. She told me that growing up with Vigdis Finnborgadot, who was the, the president, that it was natural with a female president really made something to her. So from the Icelandic point of view and from your personal point of view, what has this meant for you? Um, yeah, it's funny that you should mention a duck and, and Vigdis because yeah, I did feel it was absolutely normal. Uh, for a country to have a female president while I was growing up. And my dad would say to me, oh, are you going to be president when you grow up? And I, I um, didn't want to. I wanted to write uh, crime fiction. <laughs> so, but I felt very uh, nervous because I actually felt like I was maybe expected to. So <laughs> um, I felt uh, very pressured to be president. So I'm not sure if that goes for gir little girls everywhere. Um, so for me, I, I kind of would like to just um, say what Tess has been saying, um, because I also, um, I'm finishing my dissertation right now and um, I feel very, you know, uh, grateful to have had the chance to work uh, with all these uh, experienced scholars and, um, and to be able to um, actually research this area um, in the Icelandic context because there hasn't been much research done, almost none. Uh, so I had a lot of difficulties finding information and, and data. And there's a lot of people when you talk to them because we're doing so well in other aspects with gender equality, uh, there is this feeling that, oh yeah, it's getting better. Uh, women are, you know, uh, getting stronger within the industry, but uh, the data doesn't support that, uh, I found, which was a very um, shocking conclusion. So um, it was really, really interesting to kind of uh, be able to connect uh, this academic research and then the industry and think about activism in that respect. And uh, I share Susan's worry about the future, uh, that even the progress that we have made can be lost. And I found that women's position within the industry has actually weakened after the economic collapse in Iceland. So that shows you that, you know, when times get tough, women often have to um, pay the price. So I think we should maybe meet in a few years and, and see how everything has developed. This is something we can't stop thinking about. Thank you, Gilda and Elsa. Uh, actually, we almost ran out of time. So I, I don't know if I will, I don't think I tried to wrap it up because I think you in a way wrapped it up all together. I think, yeah, I can do solidarity, stay in touch and uh, not take the future for granted, continue to work together and, and know that we have, to, we have to be aware and we have to be there. Um, for our audience who has listened, all these wonderful contributors to this book, you can meet them at the book launch Saturday seven o'clock, go to the Kala 2020 program. There will be a little festivitas. You should bring your glass of champagne because we're gonna celebrate this book and we have the opportunity to network together. So thank you all researchers for the work you have done and for being here today. I'm so proud to start Kala together with you. Thanks everyone. Thank you thank all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.